Hello everyone, Interact here back again with another Entity Education video. In this episode, we'll be covering the best killer in the game hands down, Sally Smithson, probably better known as The Nurse. As always, I'll have some timestamps up on the screen right now, and down in the description if you feel like skipping around the video or just want to see certain parts of it. Now let's get started with The Nurse's base stats, where she already begins to differ a little bit from the original trio of killers. She does have the same base terror radius of 32 meters, the same vault time, not that you should really ever see what her vaulting animation looks like, and the same carry speed. Where she begins to show how different and original she is, is in her movement speed, which is 3.85 meters per second, or 96.25%. Now you might be saying, Interact, isn't default running speed for survivors 100%? Yeah, you'd be correct. Without Bloodlust, a nurse chasing a survivor in a straight line will never actually catch up with them, which is honestly kind of hilarious. The nurse, of course, makes up for her slow movement speed by having one of the most insanely broken powers in the game, Spencer's Last Breath, commonly referred to as blinking. Once you hold down the mouse 2 button, or whatever the power button is on the console, you will stick out your left hand and start charging your blink. You'll notice little orbs of light in the nurse's hand. This corresponds to how many blinks you have left to use, with the default being one base blink and one chain blink, but up to a maximum of five and a minimum of one using certain add-ons that we'll get into in the add-on portion of this video. And now we start to get into why the nurse is one of the most broken characters and also one of the hardest characters to play in Dead by Daylight. Once you let go of your power button, you will fly forward at a speed of 13.33 meters per second, or 333%, even faster than Billy's chainsaw with his best speed add-ons, and also you will move through any and all terrain, walls, pallets, anything, assuming of course that your landing point is within the map's boundaries and doesn't overlap with any terrain. You will move a distance based on how long you held the blink up to a base distance of 20 meters for the first blink. You'll know that your blink is fully charged once Sally clenches her hand shut. After you land from a blink, you'll have a few different things that you can do while you're in a state commonly referred to as the chain blink window. You could choose to do nothing, in which case you will enter the fatigue state, where the nurse will look at the ground, have slightly darkened vision, and basically just puke all over herself, probably due to the G's involved in moving through space and time this quickly. You can move and turn your camera a little bit during the fatigue animation, but you're severely hampered in your ability to move, and can basically only move your camera left and right, it'll sort of wobble to and fro while you're puking, and you can't look up, you are going to be staring at the floor. The base fatigue time is 2 seconds, with an increase of half of a second, 0.5 seconds, per extra blink used, and is also altered by some add-ons that we'll touch on later. Basically, one blink is 2 seconds of puking, two blinks is 2.5 seconds of puking, so on and so forth, up to the maximum base time of 4 seconds of puking if you're an insane person and used 5 blinks in a row. Another option you'll have in the chain blink window is to perform an attack, either a basic strike or a lunge. Whether or not you land a hit on a survivor, you will enter the fatigue state after your attack animation is fully finished, once again puking all over the ground. The last option that you have, and why it is referred to as the chain blink window, is to charge up another blink, assuming that you haven't run out. Remember, you can tell by the balls of light in your left hand how many blinks you have left. If you fail to use this chain blink in time, however, you'll just end up ruining your new shoes by entering the fatigue state again. If you succeed, you'll be able to blink again, albeit at roughly half the distance of the blink you previously used. Remember the phrasing on that line, roughly half the distance of the blink you previously used, because that will come up again during the add-on discussion, since some of them affect your maximum blink distance. You may notice a white, kind of shiny border thing, for lack of a better term, pop up around your screen during the chain blink window. This is the game's way of giving you a rough approximation of the ending of the window that you have left to perform an action, since once it fades away, you'll start throwing up on the ground. As I stated both in the Trapper and the Wraith videos, the nurse is one of the four killers whose power can be messed with directly by survivors, and one of the two that suffers from the light burn mechanic. The nurse is a bit different from the Wraith when it comes to Lightburn, however. The nurse is a little bit weird in her interactions with flashlights and Lightburn, 
since while it isn't really a stun per se, if a survivor is shining a flashlight at you, you can't begin to charge a blink. However, if a survivor is shining a flashlight at you while you are charging a blink, you will become stunned for roughly the same two seconds as the Wraith. This is the light burn that you'll be suffering from. The animation will look something like what is on screen. It's basically a slightly modified fatigue animation. Spencer's last breath is the entire reason to play the nurse and the reason that she is simultaneously the most broken killer in the game and one of the hardest to handle and play well. We'll get into more details about how the power can slash should be used later on in the video. This portion was just to give you a rough idea of what Spencer's last breath does and how it functions. Now let's get into the nurse's add-ons. As with Billy's add-ons, these haven't been changed in a very long time, so I have data mined information on what they do from the wiki, which is great for me, and I'm just going to go with what the wiki says because testing most of these would honestly require a dev kit or just be a complete and utter nightmare. We start at the common add-ons, where we start with Wooden Horse. This add-on will slightly decrease the accuracy of your blink, as well as slightly increase the maximum range of your blink. This means a 10% increase in range, making your maximum blink range 22 meters. Remember that your chain blinks are half of your previous blink. And while it says that it decreases accuracy by 15%, it's really unclear as to whether it's bugged or just completely unnoticeable, but decreased accuracy basically means nothing. So just keep that in mind if you see that on future add-ons. The next common add-on is White Knit Comb, which will slightly increase the movement speed of your blink. This means a 9% increase in your reappearance time, but basically it just means that you move at 370% speed while moving in a blink. Blinks are coded in a really weird way, especially when it comes to increasing the movement speed of your blink. I don't fully understand why they're coded this way. I'm sure behavior has their reasons, but basically it changes the time that it takes for you to go from point A to point B. And honestly, calculating this is would be a nightmare, which is why I'm very happy that these are data mined. But basically you go, you go faster. You go from point A to point B at a faster speed, which happens to be 370% for the white knit comb. Next up, we have Torn Bookmark, which adds one chain blink, as well as slightly reduces your maximum blink range and slightly reduces the chain blink window. This means you obviously get an additional chain blink, giving you a total of three blinks and a 10% reduction in your maximum range, bringing it down to 18 meters. It also reduces your chain blink window by 8%, but that's hardly even noticeable. Next up, we have an add-on that I really don't understand why it's even in the game, the Metal Spoon. Metal Spoon will slightly increase the charge time of your blink. This means an 8% increase to your charge speed, bringing it up from a base time of 1.991 seconds, yeah, that's really it, to 1.83172 seconds. I don't know how many significant figures Behavior uses or the Unreal Engine uses, but that's, that's the math for 8% of 1.991. This this is another reason why I'm very happy these are data mined, because that's I would hate to test this on my own. Next up we have a pretty useless add-on, the matchbox, which will slightly increase your chain blink window. As I said, this means an increase of 8% to your chain blink window timer. Basically worthless. And the final common add-on, and the reason I said I'm not sure why Metal Spoon is even in the game, is Bad Man Keepsake. This add-on will moderately increase the charge time of your blink. This means a 10% increase in your charge speed, bringing it from 1.991 seconds to 1.7919 seconds. Once again, I don't know how many significant figures the devs or the Unreal Engine uses, but yes, basically, uh, Bad Man Keepsake and Metal Spoon do the same exact thing, except Bad Man Keepsake is 2% better, and they're both common add-ons. No, I don't know why this is the case. I don't understand much of why anything is the case with the nurse. It's all very, very confusing. Now let's move on to the uncommon add-ons, where we start off with Pocket Watch. This will slightly decrease the charge speed of your blink, while moderately reducing your fatigue time. This means a decrease in charge speed by 9%, and a reduced fatigue time of 14%, and I'll put a graph up on the screen of what it does for fatigue times, but for anyone who's, I don't know, maybe listening audio only, it brings your fatigue time from one blink down to 1.72 seconds, 
two blinks down to 2.15 seconds, three blinks down to 2.58 seconds, and four blinks down to 3.01 seconds. The wiki shows the math for what a fatigue timer of five blinks would be, but since you can't actually have five blinks and run this add-on at the same time, I don't know why they did the math for that. Essentially, it reduces the fatigue time of each chain blink by 0.43 seconds, if that is easier to understand. Next up we have Dull Bracelet, which will moderately increase your blink movement speed at the cost of slightly decreasing your blink charge speed. This means your blink movement will decrease your reappearance time by 12%, uh, whatever. It brings your speed up to 385%. Once again, I really don't know why they coded it this way, just go with it. And it will bring your charge timer up by 8% from 1.991 seconds to 2.089 seconds which is basically not even noticeable. And now we have Dark Cincher, I hope I pronounced that right, which will add one additional chain blink, bringing you up to a base of three, at the cost of slightly reducing the maximum range of your blink. Remember, once again, that you have one base blink and one base chain blink, so this will in fact give you three blinks total, if used by itself and with nothing else. The range reduction of slightly is once again 10%, bringing you down to a maximum range of 18 meters. And our final uncommon add-on is Catatonic Boy's Treasure. This will moderately increase the range of your blink at the cost of moderately reducing the accuracy of your blink. This means a 15% increase in the range of your blink, bringing it up to 23 meters for a fully charged first blink, and a decrease in 30% of accuracy, which probably means nothing. Honestly, behavior is the only one who can tell us whether it does or it doesn't. Moving on to the rare add-ons, we have spasmodic, spasmodic, spasmodic breath, I don't know, which will considerably increase the charge speed of your blink at the cost of slightly increasing the fatigue time of your blink. This will increase the charge time of your blink by 12%, bringing it to, oh boy, 1.75208. Please behavior, if you could at least just tell me how many decimal points you use, that would be nice, thank you. You don't have to tell me everything, just tell me how many decimal points matter. And we'll also increase your fatigue time by 10%. Once again, I'll put the chart up on the screen, and once again, no, you can't have this add-ons in 5 blinks, so I don't know why the wiki did the math for that, but who cares, honestly. 1 blink fatigue will be 2.2 seconds, 2 blink fatigue will be 2.75 seconds, 3 blinks will be 3.3, 4 blinks will be 3.85. This is an increase of 0.55 seconds per chain blink. Next up we have Heavy Panting, yes this is the real name of the add-on, I can't make this up, which will moderately increase your chain blink window at the cost of moderately increasing your fatigue duration. This means a 12% increase in your chain blink window, once again fairly useless, and a 14% increase in your fatigue timer, here's your nice chart again. One blink is 2.28 seconds, two blinks is 2.85 seconds, three blinks is 3.5 for 2 seconds and 4 blinks is 3.99 seconds. Once again, no you cannot use this and have 5 blinks, I don't know why they put that on the chart, and it's an increase of 0.57 seconds per chain blink. And now we get into one of the easiest to understand add-ons, and doesn't have a downside, Fragile Wheeze. This will add an additional chain blink. That's it. Nice, simple, clean, I wish every add-on were this easy to explain and go over. Next up is Ataxic Respiration, which will considerably increase the maximum range of your blink at the cost of considerably decreasing the accuracy of your blink, which doesn't do anything. This means a 20% increase in your range, bringing it up to a total of 24 meters for a fully charged blink, and a 45% decrease in a stat that doesn't seem to make any difference whatsoever. And the final rare add-on for the nurse is Anxious Gasp. This will considerably increase your blink movement speed at the cost of moderately decreasing your blink charge speed. This means a 15% decrease in your reappearance timer, but basically you'll go 400% speed while blinking, which is insanity, and decrease your charge timer by 10%, bringing it to 2.118 seconds, I believe. I'm gonna put up a little picture of the wiki. Uh, it has some of the most confusing language I've ever read in my life about this add-on, so if you can decipher what in the world they're trying to say, props. Moving on to the nurse's very rare add-ons, we'll start off with one that might be helpful if you're just trying to learn the nurse, 
but since it's a very rare add-on, I'm not sure it's even worth using since it's not going to show up very much and costs a lot of blood points and I've personally never used it because it just feels kind of like a waste. Plaid Flannel will allow you to see the landing area of your blink. Once again, a very simple add-on, I wish they were all like this. It can be helpful for learning, but I'm not sure it's worth running. Now we get into the real meat and potatoes add-ons, and the reason I stress that you have by default one blink and one chain blink. Kavanaugh's Last Breath will moderately increase your chain blink window at the cost of slightly increasing your fatigue duration and removing one chain blink. This means a 12% increase to your chain blink window, a 10% increase to your fatigue timer, once again chart up on the screen, and no, you cannot use this add-on and have four blinks, so I have no idea why they have four or five blinks. Basically, it's an increase of fatigue time by 0.55 seconds per chain blink, same as the spasmodic breath add-on from earlier. This add-on is honestly just terrible. You should probably never run it. Next up, we have Jenner's Last Breath, which will tremendously increase your blink movement speed at the cost of moderately decreasing your blink charge speed and removing one chain blink. This means an increase in your reappearance timer by 18%, or basically 415% movement speed while blinking, and a decrease in charge time by 10%, bringing it up to 2.118 according to the wiki's data mining on the previous add-on, Anxious Gasp, but I still don't understand why or how it got to this number from data mining. It's probably just best to not bother wondering why behavior is doing anything that they're doing with the nurse. You also might be seeing a theme here. Most of her very rare add-ons remove a chain blink, which is why most people just stick to rare or uncommon add-ons. Because the very rare add-ons kind of just suck. And now we'll move on to the big boy very rare add-on, one that you might actually see used. Campbell's Last Breath will add two additional chain blinks at the cost of slightly reducing the maximum range of your blink. This means, once again, a reduction in your range of 10%, bringing your maximum range down to 18 meters. This is one of the add-ons used in conjunction with a additional chain blink add-on to give you the 5 blink meme build, which is honestly just disgusting, but also hilarious at the same time. Don't ever use 5 blinks, kids. And the nurse's final add-on, once again, yeah, she doesn't have any ultra rares either, is the bad man's last breath. This add-on will tremendously increase the charge speed of your blink at the cost of slightly increasing your fatigue timer and once again removing one chain blink. This is an increase in charge speed of 14%, which by my math brings it down to 1.71226, but this could be wrong since apparently everything about the nurse's power is calculated in a super complex and nonsensical way. I'll put the fatigue chart up as well, but it's the same as the previous few add-ons an increase of 0.55 seconds per chain blink. Now with all that ridiculous, nonsensical math out of the way, let's get into the how to play portion of the video for the nurse. Honestly, I'm going to preface this by saying I am not the best nurse player in the world. I'd even hesitate to call myself good at the nurse. I might be decent, but I'll try and give some helpful tips in this section. Just be aware that if you want to get good at the nurse, in addition to practicing a lot, you'll probably want to be playing on PC, since what I hear from console players is that the FPS drops are completely unbearable while trying to blink, and the nurse is basically unplayable. All of that being said, however, the nurse comes down to a lot of muscle memory and practice, so be prepared to spend a lot of time and probably lose a lot of games if you want to become a nurse main or just become decent or good or great at the nurse. One of the biggest things outside of practice that I would say you are going to need while playing the nurse, and one of the things that was the hardest for me to get down, is patience. If you're too hasty to swing at survivors after blinking, you're going to lose a lot of extra time in the fatigue or swing cooldown, since they add up. If you're too hasty to blink after them, they might double back on you, and you'll overshoot them heavily and lose a bunch of time. Patience is extremely rewarded when playing the nurse, even more so than probably any other killer in the game. So be sure to be patient, be methodical about your play while playing the nurse. The first basic tip that I can give you on how to play the nurse is that you're going to need an understanding of how survivors move around the map 
and to a certain degree, you're going to need to be able to predict where they're going to go. If you have a great grasp on how to do this, you'll be able to blink on top of survivors with ease, and you'll probably come close to almost never missing a blink. Just know that if you aren't 100% sure, 100% sure, that you're going to land a hit after blinking, don't even bother swinging. As I said, if you do swing and miss, it delays your fatigue stun to give you the full animation of finishing a missed swing and will waste a few extra seconds, giving the survivors that those few extra seconds to possibly run away and hide. You want to be confident that you're going to land hits before you swing or don't swing at all, I cannot stress that enough. Learning how survivors move and being able to predict them isn't really something that I can teach. It's not even teachable at all, even if I was the best nurse player in the world. Since it varies from person to person, they're not robots. You can't use an algorithm to predict where they're going to go. And your typical, they'll run for a window or pallet, doesn't really apply here since survivors know that the nurse ignores windows and pallets, and so they'll just try and do weird erratic movements to juke you, They'll go and hide behind a rock, and you'll think, oh, they're going to keep running, and then they didn't, and it's, once again, practice, muscle memory, patience. These are all things you're going to need to invest a lot in to play the nurse. Something you may notice survivors doing is something I just briefly touched on, is attempting to break line of sight when you're charging up a blink, and then possibly standing still or doubling back on you to make you overshoot your blink. You can combat this easily by either not always fully charging blinks, or attempting to maintain line of sight as much as possible. This is where your chain blinks come into play, since you can use them to correct any errors you possibly made with the first blink. This is the reason a lot of people run three blinks on the nurse, and why she originally came out with three blinks, but was subsequently nerfed because that was a bit too powerful. There is no shame in only charging up a blink for a brief period of time to basically get just a big old super lunge, assuming you actually land the hit, otherwise there's a whole lot of shame in doing that. Just keep in mind, you don't always need to always fully charge every single blink and use the maximum amount of chain blink window. If you're using it to move just 8 meters instead of 20 meters, if you land a hit, that's completely okay. There's no shame in using it just as a movement tool to move short distances extremely quickly. A trick you can use to help combat people who are doubling back on you or running back into you is what I'm going to refer to as short blinking. It probably has different names among different people, but I'll be calling it short blinking in this video. Remember how I said at the start of the video that if the game doesn't have anywhere on the map to put you, you won't actually move at all while blinking? Well, as long as you're on a piece of a map that doesn't have something below it, like maybe a basement or a lower floor of the map, if you aim your blink at the ground, no matter how fully charged up it is, you will basically not move at all when the blink happens. You'll stay in place, or move maybe just a short distance depending on how you've aimed it. If done properly, this can effectively counter people who are employing the strategy of just run at the nurse while she's charging up her blink, she can't hit you then. Which by the way isn't a very good strategy at all, it's kinda dumb. This can backfire on certain tiles of maps, such as like the Killer Shack, or the Preschool of Bad Ham Preschool, or the game. Since there is a floor below you at certain points of the map, so you can't actually short blink. A lot of survivors will take advantage of that if they're more experienced, and knowing that if you do try and short blink, you'll end up in the basement, you'll end up somewhere you really don't want to be, and they will try and run back at you. Just on certain maps like that, if you know there is something below you and you can't short blink, just don't fully charge your blinks. Also, as I said once again, if the game doesn't have anywhere on the map to put you, or you're moving into a piece of terrain, it will make you not move at all. This can make you miss your blinks occasionally on certain pieces of terrain, such as like the hill or large, the big large rocks on Macmillan maps or the big hay pale, hay hay bale piles on farm maps, since the hitboxes on them are a little wonky, sometimes you'll say, okay, I'm definitely going to blink through this, and then you just kind of bump into it. It's a lot of trial and error when you're just starting out. If you want to get good at the nurse, you're just going to have to tough it out and learn the muscle memory for how long you have to charge with whatever add-ons you're using or without add-ons to be able to get through those pieces of terrain. Because the hitboxes for blink and them are both really weird, so it can end up 
just being weird. A perk to look out for while playing the nurse is Dead Hard. Dead Hard can waste a fair amount of time against the nurse if the survivor uses it properly. So if you think they have Dead Hard, or you know that they have it because they've made you whiff once before, be sure to once again just be patient. This is where patience once again comes in. Sure, you're going to miss an opportunity to land a hit, but if you swing and they dead hard, you're going to waste even more time than waiting. So try to blink on top of them to force them to dead hard, to make them think that you're going to hit them, and then wait out your fatigue timer, and then do it again, and then hit them, because you know that they're exhausted and can't dead hard away again. As I touched on earlier in the video, the nurse can do both a normal attack and a lunge when coming out of the blink animation, and you should practice knowing which you're going to need to use to land a hit on the survivor. A basic swing has barely any animation coming out of a blink, out of the blink animation, so it'll basically look as if you've teleported on top of them and hit them almost instantaneously. It almost looks as if you're cheating if done properly. The lunge coming out of a blink is a standard lunge, standard distance and speed, they changed it a while back when they normalized all killer lunge speeds. It used to be different, but now it is completely the same as all other killers. If you're being extremely precise about your blinking, don't bother going for lunges, since they'll waste just a slight bit more time on recovery, and normal hits will work just fine. For the most part, unless you're an insane nurse player, however, you're probably going to need to use that extra distance from lunges to actually hit the survivors, and you will be mainly using lunges, but keep in mind that you don't have to always use lunges. You don't need to lunge every single time, you can just do a basic swing. Since the nurse has a slower movement speed than the base killer speed and the base survivor run speed, you should typically be using your blinks to move around the map faster than if you were to just spookily float everywhere. This is something you'll get a feel for, and honestly I'm terrible at remembering to do this because I play the nurse kind of infrequently, and I'm used to just walking everywhere, but after a long time of playing, you, you will get a feel for when a blink is the right thing to do, and when just walking is the right thing to do. This can be especially helpful to remember to do on a map such as Haddonfield, where there are those extremely large walls with no gaps in them whatsoever, and it would take forever for a normal killer to walk around, whereas you can just blink right over it and be right on top of the survivor in a split second. This is one of the main reasons that the nurse is the best killer in the game, as I've stated before, since she just ignores walls, pallets, windows, floors, anything that is terrain. Once again, do keep in mind that while you can't short blink, you can ignore the floors on maps such as Bad Am Preschool or the game, since you can just blink through them. Just be careful that you don't end up over blinking and possibly ending up in the basement or on the wrong floor and aiming going up or down floors can require a little bit of precision. So that's something you might want to practice. You might want to burn offerings to go to the game to practice the verticality of the blinks. They can be finicky sometimes, whether it wants to let you go up or not. But basically, just be sure to blink as much as is possible to make moving around the map easier than if you were just floating around like an idiot like me, because I forgot I was playing the nurse and that I could just blink everywhere. And the last thing I want to touch on, something I've heard newer players complain about, and I've complained about it myself, is corn. If you aren't paying super close attention while chasing a survivor through corn, you can easily get lost and lose the chase. Corn is... a lot of people are just corn blind, apparently, myself included. The tip that I would give you outside of just practicing on maps, maybe burning some offerings so you have to play on the corn maps, is to watch the very tops of the corn stalks. When survivors run through them, they do actually bend side to side, so you can use that to track survivors. Trying to follow survivors with scratches or blood through corn might end up with you having a bad time. Try to watch the top of the corn, and then use your blink muscle memory to get to where they are and then hit them through the corn. Once again, as with everything with the nurse, this is going to require patience, it's going to require practice, it's going to require time. There is no easy, quick way to get extremely good at the nurse, outside of, I guess, running Omega Blink and just three blink, I don't know, man. Just practice the nurse, don't use crutches. Just practice, practice, practice. Now let's get into the nurse's teachable perks. At level 30, you'll unlock the teachable for the perk Strider. Strider will make the breathing of survivors in pain increase by 25-50-50% and make regular breathing 0 slash 0 slash 25% louder. Yeah, it's really weird numbers, I know. Some people like using this perk on a killer like the Spirit, 
or the Legion to make breathing louder while using their powers, since scratch marks and survivors, depending on which killer you're playing, disappear. But honestly, I think there are just better tracking perks in the game than Strider. The only time I ever personally use this is when it comes up in my randomizer when I'm playing random perks, and it seems to happen pretty frequently because the randomizer hates me. Overall, I really don't think Strider is a very good perk, but if you have nothing else, go for it. At level 35, you'll unlock the teachable for Thanatophobia. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I kind of waffle between pronouncing it correctly and incorrectly. I hate Latin. This perk is going to have a lot of numbers involved, so be prepared for that. Thanatophobia will give survivors penalties to their repair, healing, and sabotage speeds based on how many are injured, dying, or hooked. If there is one survivor that is injured, dying, or hooked, all survivors will have a 4-5-6% reduced action speed. If there are two survivors that are one of those three things, they will get a 7-8-9% reduced action speed. For three survivors, it will be 10 slash 11 slash 12% reduced action speed. And for four survivors, it will be 13 slash 14 slash 15% reduced action speed. Why it doesn't count dead survivors, since Thanatophobia is Latin for the fear of death, and you'd think that your teammates being dead would make you more afraid of dying, I, I don't know, but whatever. Maybe that would make it too good. This perk is an interesting one, since you'd think that reducing survivors' action speed would be pretty good. But keep in mind that if every survivor is in one of those three categories, they will only get a 12 second increase to repairing a generator by themselves, have a 2.4 second increase to healing each other, or a 4.8 second increase to self-caring themselves. If you're using this to slow down the game, a perk like Hex Ruin or Sloppy Butcher will typically buy you more time. However, if you're planning on using it with Hex Ruin or Sloppy Butcher, sure it can be okay for buying extra amounts of time, but for the most part the numbers on it are just not great because most survivors don't stay injured. Most survivors will get healed up pretty quickly. And if they're all healed, it's not doing anything for you. And finally at level 40 you'll unlock probably one of the best perks in the game, A Nurse's Calling. This is a basic but effective perk. This will show you the aura of any survivor who is healing or being healed when they are within 20 slash 24 slash 28 meters of you. Keep in mind, this won't give you a notification, you're going to have to use your eyes. But as I've said before, wall hacks are wall hacks, and wall hacks are banned in competitive online multiplayer games for a reason. Do note, this will only show you survivors that are healing or being healed. It will not show you anyone who is using the mending action from deep wounds, either from your playing the legion or from borrowed time. It will not show you survivors who are snapping out of Madness 3 on the Doctor as of the latest patch. It will not show you anyone who is recovering in the down state, either normally, via no mither, via unbreakable, etc. etc. It will only show you survivors who are healing themselves or others, and it will show you both the person who is being healed and the healers or healer. It's, as I've said, still one of the best perks in the game for finding injured people because wall hacks are wall hacks. Now let's get into some perk builds for the nurse. As always, we'll start with a build assuming that you only have the base killer perks and the nurse's perks because you're an insane person and have decided that the nurse is the first killer you want to play and then move on to some more meta builds and follow that up with a few meme builds. Starting off with our new player build, honestly I would recommend you don't start with the nurse, but hey, it's your life, you live it. You might want to run a perk build that looks something like this. A nurse's calling, thanatophobia, sloppy butcher, and whispers. You might want to consider unrelenting if you're extremely new to the game or to the nurse, since you're probably going to be whiffing a lot of blink hits and the 30% reduction can be okay, but it's typically not a great perk. This build mostly relies on Thanatophobia and Sloppy Butcher slowing down the survivors, especially in terms of healing, but also in terms of generator progress, and then giving you the wall hacks with the nurses calling to see them while they are slowed down on that healing action. Whispers, as I've talked about before in previous videos, is amazing for not only knowing where the survivors are, but also where they aren't. Perks aren't very important to the nurse, since most of her strength is derived from her blinking, 
but these are just a few nice perks for a newer player starting out to help you slow the game down just a little bit. Since you might not be able to just, you know, blink around the map like a madman and down everyone easily, you might be whiffing a fair amount, so you might want the game to slow down a slight bit to give you that extra cushion when you're missing your swings or missing your blinks or overshooting or whatever. Now moving on to our meta perk build, the typical meta build for the nurse looks something like this. Barbecue and Chili, Shadowborn, Make Your Choice, and Whispers. A lot of people might swap out Make Your Choice for a Nurse's Calling, since a lot of people view running Make Your Choice on the Nurse as making the game a little bit too easy, but it's honestly a personal call. Barbecue is pretty self-explanatory, gives you an aura of survivors after hooking someone so you can know where to blink over to and keep your map pressure high, and the extra blood points are always nice. As I said, Make Your Choice is pretty dirty, since you can get far away enough to have it trigger on an unhook, and then easily get back and hit the survivor that is exposed fairly easily, because blinks make you go really far and really fast. Whispers is Whispers, I'm honestly not sure what more I can say about the perk at this point. The odd perk out from a, your typical meta build here is Shadowborn. Now, people have a specific reason for running Shadowborn on the nurse. Aside from the nice field of view, or FOV as I'll be referring to it in the future, increase that you get from Shadowborn, so you can see survivors across the map and blink to them, the increase FOV actually works during the fatigue state, allowing you to not lose track of survivors that you hit and are running away as easily while you're in that fatigue state. I'll throw up a little quick comparison to show you that the increased FOV is actually pretty helpful while you're puking all over your shoes. If you think Make Your Choice is a little too dirty for you, the other typical perk to run is a Nurse's Calling instead, since once again it gives you wall hacks on healing survivors and you can just blink over to them and hit them. In terms of other perks that you could run, once again, for the most part, a good nurse doesn't really need perks, since her power just breaks the game, but here are a few you might consider. If you're worried about survivors using items possibly to light burn you or to do generators quicker, Franklin's Demise is always good for just stealing some charges off of items, or making them waste time to pick them back up, or just making them leave their items on the ground altogether. A fairly common perk for nurses who are maybe just a bit sweaty, I hate using that term, but maybe just a little bit, and want to close out games fairly quickly, is Hex Devour Hope. Since you have so much map pressure and you're not running Ruin, so survivors possibly aren't looking out for Hex Totems, and you can easily get away from hooks by blinking away, even if they're basically hook diving you. Once you hit that 3 stack mark and make everyone exposed, you pretty much just win the game unless they cleanse your totem. The extra movement speed at 2 tokens is nice I guess, but for the most part you're using this for the insta down potential. If you're thinking of running Hex Devour Hope, you might want to pair it with Hex Haunted Ground for a little bit of extra protection, or Hex Thrill of the Hunt once again for a little extra protection. Haunted Ground I would honestly recommend over Thrill, because Haunted Ground will give you maybe even a few more insta downs if they cleanse the wrong totem. You'll probably get a lot of hate mail if you're any good at blink hits and run these, but let's be honest any halfway decent nurse is probably going to get a lot of hate anyways from anyone who's extremely salty. Now you might be wondering, why have I not recommended Hex Ruin or Sloppy Butch? I recommended them in all of my other killer videos. If you think you need to slow the game down, you can, but I wouldn't advise really using them unless you're not super confident in your blinking ability. And honestly, if you're not super confident in your blinking ability, just practice more. The nurse takes a long time to master, so if you want to get good at her, just keep practicing. You might want to run them while you're practicing to make it a little bit slower, but for the most part, Hex Ruin and Sloppy Butcher, they can be okay. Sloppy Butcher works really well with Nurse's Calling, but you don't really need to slow the game down because you're the nurse and you just blink through walls and hit people and down them in two seconds. You might consider something like Pop Goes the Weasel as well, since you do have the ability to move around the map quickly and with ease, but I always feel like the short window to actually use it and needing to know where a progress generator is really keep Pop Goes the Weasel from being a really strong perk. I know some nurses will run overcharge to give them that extra bit of slowdown on generator progress and a little bit of tracking as well if survivors are missing the skill checks, since you can easily get the noise notification and get to it if they've missed it just by blinking at them. I personally don't see that much worth in a perk like overcharge since skill checks shouldn't really be missed by any good survivor, but keep it in mind if you're looking for maybe a slightly off meta perk to explore using. And now, I almost don't even want to bring this up, but I'm going to get into maybe a little controversial 
perk choice for the nurse. And I'm sure you already know what I'm going to say. Stay calm, Megan. I'm on your side with this one. Some nurses will run Hex No One Escapes Death or Know It. Honestly, I understand why, but I feel like running it on the nurse is like adding an extra booster to an already extremely large rocket. There's not really a need to, it's kind of just overkill. The nurse has so much map pressure that if played even decently, you shouldn't really be worried about your endgame. The survivors shouldn't really make it to the endgame. If you need Noed to win your games, you should probably just drop it and practice your blinking and your tracking and your pressure. If you're running Noed consistently, and you find yourself consistently getting to the end of the game and using it to get a few extra kills, you're not really going to progress as a nurse player. If that doesn't matter to you, and you're fine with running it, that's completely fine. Everyone has their own ways of playing. You're free to run whatever perk setup, whatever add-on setup you want to use. If you want to run Noed 5 Blink every single game, that is your right. It's a game. Everything in the game is in the game, and is fair game. I said the word game a lot there, but you understand what I'm trying to say. Just understand that you're probably propping yourself up on a crutch, that's why it's called a crutch perk. And once that crutch gets knocked out from under you, you might fall over. I used to run Noed on the nurse. Let's be honest, who, who hasn't run Noed on the nurse? We're all human. We were all noobs once, you know? What happened is I realized it wasn't helping me grow as a nurse player at all. So I did something honestly really stupid. I dropped Noed and I started playing one blink nurse. I would not recommend this. And I just accepted that I was going to lose a lot of games, and I lost a whole lot of games. I had entire days where I would stream myself just playing the nurse and trying to get better. I had miserable games. I, I had zero kill games. I had zero hook games. But then I started to slowly feel like I was getting a little bit more of a hang of how to blink and how to land those hits easier. Then I started getting one hook games. Then I started getting one kill games. Then I started getting two or three kill games. I'm still probably a pretty subpar nurse by high rank standards or high skill level players, but I've come a long way and I would chalk it up to practicing, not using a single crutch perk like Noed. That's just my personal thoughts and opinions. As I said, that's my personal thoughts, personal thoughts and opinions about running Noed on the nurse. I also personally don't run three blink on the nurse because I feel that it's a crutch, but as I've said, it's personal preference, it's a video game, you play it the way that you want to play it. If that's the way you feel like playing, that's the way you feel like playing. I personally just don't believe that it's a good way to play, and a good way to progress as a nurse player. That's all I'm going to say about that. With that heavy discussion about Noed out of the way, let's get into a little bit of the meme build section for this video on the nurse. Honestly, there isn't really much to meme about the nurse, and she's really good. And there is one, and it's mostly just about add-ons, so it doesn't really matter what perks you bring, just bring your favorite perks. In this build, you're going to want to bring add-ons that will allow you to have the full five blinks. The catch here is that you're only allowed to use a blink per generator completed or the other way around. This means that either you start off with all five blinks and you lose a blink every time the survivors complete a generator. This one's a lot easier to track since the number in the lower left-hand screen is the amount of blinks you are allowed to use or every survivor they complete, you gain a blink and you start with zero blinks, which means you're just floating around like a big old idiot. Both are fine, but I believe the version in which you start with zero and gain more based on generators completed is a little bit more fun and kind of in the spirit of just messing around and having a good time. It's a little harder to track how many blinks you have, but I think it's more fun to start with zero and gain a blink every time they finish a generator so their progress sort of makes you stronger instead of weaker. That's basically all there is to that one. It, it can be a nice way to just mess around, especially when you get to the point where you only have like one or zero blinks, and the game becomes very interesting when you're moving slower than survivors. Another quick meme build, sort of in the same vein, would be to run any add-on that removes all of your chain blinks and play with just your one base blink. As I touched on a bit earlier, I did do this to practice being more precise with my blinks, and I'm not really sure I would recommend this to any sane person, it will typically confuse survivors, and will also help you appreciate the usage of your blink to be able to land hits. Typically, you're probably going to want to run some kind of range or speed increaser here to actually help you get the hits that you're landing. And if you're a truly insane person, you could play the nurse and just never hit the power button and play zero blink nurse. Once again, would not recommend doing that, but that's another little meme that you can do if you really enjoy it. Survivors will be absolutely confused. 
and you'll probably still lose. And that brings us to the end for this episode of Entity Education, focusing on Sally Smithson, better known as The Nurse. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out my channel for other videos going into depth about the previous killers in Dead by Daylight, and leave a like and or comment on this video if you feel like it. If you want to watch me play Dead by Daylight live, feel free to check out down in the description or follow the link up on the screen right now to check out my Twitch page. I do have a schedule posted for my streaming times in the boxes on my Twitch page down below the chant that I don't know what they're called. If you want to be extremely generous and help support me in making these videos and help me pay the honestly kind of absurd costs for using Adobe products, feel free to check out my Patreon. Once again, link down in the description. That's not... If you want to be extremely generous, I always try to emphasize extremely generous. This is for people who really want to go out of their way to support these videos. You can donate on Patreon or on Twitch or whatever. I, I appreciate all money. It's not required. I do this as a hobby. I will always say that until the end of time. Thank you for watching once again. I personally appreciate everyone who comes and watches these videos, leaves comments, likes, whatever. And I'll see you in the next video covering the first of the licensed killers and a personal favorite of mine, the Shape, more commonly known as Michael Myers. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.